All right, subnetting. This is generally the topic that most students struggle with the most. So, subnetting. Uh, we have our default class full subnet masks, but they're rarely the optimal choice for a subnet size. So we talked about the fact that we had those slash 8, slash 16, and slash 24 masks. And we'll talk about how many IPs are really in each of those later, but they're rarely the ideal uh, use for us. And so what subnets can do is they can modify a subnet mask to create networks that are more appropriately scoped for what we need. This allows us to create subnets that involve borrowing bits from the original host portion and adding them to our network portion. So this is why the conversion from decimal to binary and binary to decimal becomes important. So the whole purpose of our subnetting is to have a more efficient use of IP addresses than the classful default. This enables us to separate our networks for security and enables us to give better bandwidth control and quality of service. Uh, if you look here in our, our subnet masks, our defaults of uh, 8 bits, 16 bits, and 24 bits for our network portion, that actually gives us for our host portion a significant amount of IPs. For a class A address, for instance, it's 16 million IPs. For a class B, it's 65,000 IPs. For a class C, it's 254 IPs. If I think about my home network, I have an entire class C dedicated to my home network of 192.168.1. something. That gives me 254 usable IPs. I only have about 15 or 20 devices. I don't need that many. Now, because I'm using a private scope, it's not a big deal. But if I was using a public IPs and they were routable, I'd have to pay for each and every one of those IPs, whether I was using them or not. And so that can become very pricey and very expensive. And so by subnetting, we can eliminate a lot of that. So with subnetting, if you look here in our table, the ones in red are our classful ones for A, B, and C. Our slash 8, our slash 16, and our slash 24. Now I could fill the entire page going from slash 8 all the way down to slash 30, but I'm not going to do that because we don't need to memorize all this. But we do need to understand how to calculate it, and we'll work through that together. So for instance, if we look at our slash uh, 24 there, or actually we'll take our slash 8 for example, 255.0.0.0. If you notice the next one down, the slash 9 is 255.128. Where did that 128 come from? Well, if you look to the middle, the binary notation, notice the only difference in those is it went from having 8 ones to having 9 ones. That first one, based on our binary lecture we just had in computer math, was the 128 position. That's how we got 255.128.0.0. If I went to slash 10, that would have another one after it. It would become 128 plus 64, right, which is 192. So it would become the 255.192.0.0 subnet mask if we had a slash 10. So subnetting formulas. The formulas will work every single time for you, which is nice, uh, but it does involve a little bit of math. So if you want to calculate the number of subnets that are created, you're going to use 2 to the s, where s is the number of borrowed bits. So for instance, in the last chart that I was just showing you, if I'm using that slash 9, we borrowed one bit, this bit right here. We took it from the host portion and added it to the network portion. By doing that, we would have 2 to the 1, which would be 2, and we created two subnets on that class A scope. Now if I wanted to create, calculate the number of assignable IPs, originally we had 16 million, right? Well now I'm going to have 2 to the H, which is the number of host bits left. So in our case, there are 32 total bits. We just used 9 of them as part of the network. So now we're going to have <coughs> excuse me, 23 host bits left. So it'd be 2 to the 23rd number of addresses, which works out to be about 8 million addresses which is quite a bit. Still way too big of a network for us, right? Um, conversely, if we take the bottom one here, this slash 30, I have a standard class C would be these first three here, right? Which is those first 24 bits, and we borrowed six more. So if I borrowed six, I would have two to the S number of subnets, two to the sixth number of subnets, which would be 64 subnets, okay? Each subnet has 2 to the h, which we have two zeros there, so that's 2. So that's 2 to the second, 4, minus 2, so two assignable IPs. So these slash 30s, you're going to see them used quite often in router-to-router -router communication. It's a subnetwork where there is a network, two IP hosts, and a broadcast. So you only have four IPs, two of which are usable.
And that's the other thing why we have this minus 2 here, calculating the number, number of assignable IPs. Just because you have four IPs, there are still only two that are usable. The first IP of any subnet and the last IP of any subnet are reserved. The first one is the name of the network, the last one is the broadcast. So when we deal with classful versus subnetted networks, we have to worry about that. Okay? If we're looking at a classful subnet, it's always going to be 2 to the 0 because we didn't borrow any bits. By not borrowing any bits, 2 to the 0 is 1. We're going to have one network. So if I'm looking at a class C, for instance, I'm going to have 2 to the 0 borrowed bits, giving me one network of 2 to the H bits, which is 256 IPs. But again, remember, I have to take away one for the network and one for the broadcast, so I'm only going to have 254 usable. If I have a classless subnet, like in the example below, where I had borrowed two bits, that gives me two to the second number of networks, or four networks. Now I'm taking that 256 total IPs and I'm dividing them into four pieces, 64 per piece. So it's like if you have a pie. I can cut the pie as one slice and eat the entire pie myself or I can cut the, the pie into four slices and give each of you a piece of the pie, right? That's all we're doing with subnetting is we're taking the whole pie and we're cutting it up however many times we need to. So when we calculate the number of subnets, let's take this example. We have a slash 26. The default for a class C, this is 192 something, right? So it's a class C address, is slash 24. So we borrowed how many bits? If we take 26 minus 24, we get 2. So 2 to the second is 4, so that tells us there are 4 networks being created. So how many IPs would that be? If we look at that, we have total of 32 bits minus the subnet mask of 26 gives us 6 host bits. Those 6 host bits are 2 to the H minus 2, which is 2 to the 6th minus 2, which gives us 64 minus 2 or 62 host IPs available, plus our broadcast plus our network. So this gives us 62 assignable IPs in each subnet, which is probably a much more manageable size than the original 256 that were available. So when we list our subnets out, we're going to actually do it based off their network ID, which is that first IP in any range. So in our case, we created four different subnets of 62 IPs each. So now we're going to see where each network begins and ends. So here I have 192.168.0.0. That's the network name. I have 62 usable addresses, dot one through dot 62, and then the broadcast is going to be dot 63. That is the first network that I created. I created four total though, so the next one's going to start at 64. I'm going to use 65 through 126 as my networks that my IPs that are usable, and 127 becomes my broadcast. The next one goes to 128, goes 129 through 190 of usable. 191 is my broadcast and then 192 using up 193 through 254 as usable and 255 being my broadcast. So you can see where that 62 per network came in plus the network IP plus the broadcast here and how we chopped up the 256 into four networks. So when we deal with classless interdomain routing what it does is it saves us from having to write out the subnet mass each time. Instead I can just use a shorthand this slash notation also known as CIDR. So it summarizes our contiguous networks to be aggregated. It's our route aggregation. Okay? So here, if I look at them all in binary, I can see what portion of my networks are the same. And I highlighted them in here in red. So the first, let's see, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus another 6 gives me 22. So those are my first 22 bits, or my slash 22. That is the network portion. The rest of it is what is called the host portion. And so we have those four networks are all sharing the same slash 22 portion, and we can aggregate those networks together. So when I look at subnetting, one way is you can memorize the entire chart from slash 8 all the way to slash 30. Another way is you can actually learn how to calculate this stuff like we did in the lecture here. Um, for the Network Plus exam, the most common ones you're going to get are slash 25 through slash 30. So if you're fairly comfortable with those and you can learn the number of subnets and the number of IPs available, you'll do fairly well on the exam. And that is our basics of subnetting.